Hi everybody, Tex-Mex here. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today we're gonna do a couple of tests. For one thing, this, this rifle here, it's a Rock River Arms rifle. It has the stainless steel barrel. It's got the wild chamber. I believe it, it's a one in nine twist and it's a mid-length gas system. Now what I want to do with this particular rifle is that I'm gonna do a test, first of all, to see if pulling on the strap, because I've got a strap, uh, you know, a shoulder strap on this rifle, if pulling on the strap one way or the other causes a shift of impact. Now I'm shooting at 80 yards, so maybe that's not far enough to really see much of a shift, but that's only part of the test because the other part's gonna be whether or not a free float handguard is gonna improve accuracy to any significant effect at about 80 yards. Because what I plan to do is I am gonna switch this guard out. I am gonna put a free float handguard on here. I am gonna remove this front sight base. And when I do that, I'll come back here. I'll shoot this exact same ammunition again at 80 yards. I'm gonna measure the groups that we get and see if there is any significant difference in accuracy once I switch this barrel out to a free floating hand guard. Now I've got two different types of ammunition I'm going to use. Neither of these are necessarily match grade or very good ammunition, but it should work for the purposes of our test. I wanted to do a 55 and a 62 grain. So the 55 grain we have is this PMC bronze. Uh, this 223, 55 grain. It is a full metal jacket boat tail. Uh, I've had very good uh, luck with this ammunition. I know a lot of people think it's pretty trashy or maybe slightly underpowered, but I've gotten good groups out of it with other rifles in the past. And then I've got this Silver Bear 62 grain hollow point 223. Now, obviously this is, what is it? It is, well, it's also a boat tail bullet, according to this. It is a zinc plated steel case, non-corrosive ammunition <laughs> made in Russia. Oh boy, this is old. I've had this for some time. <laughs> so it's time to shoot it. If I had some more quality ammo, I would use it, but I'm going to use this ammo and it's going to be the exact same ammunition I test out of it once I put the free float handguard on there to see if there is any significant difference at 80 yards in accuracy. So let's go ahead and load up the 55 grain first. We've got 10 rounds of the PMC bronze loaded. What I plan to do is I'm going to squeeze off five rounds straight at the bullseye without pulling on the shoulder strap in any way, shape or form. And then the second five rounds, I'm gonna put some serious tension on it, pulling it to the right and uh, see if that makes any difference in our point of impact. So let's go ahead and get started. Looks like I'm hitting high at this distance. And this uh, rifle, just for information for the video, it does have a uh, two-stage trigger in it. It has the Rock River Arms two-stage installed in the lower. Now that's five rounds. Now what I'm gonna do is I am now pulling the shoulder strap tight to the right as I shoot the next five rounds. See how that makes any difference.
and that's five now i couldn't really tell much of a difference when i was pulling the strap in the points of impact that may have something to do with the fact that this is a stainless steel barrel it's not a government profile uh i don't think it's necessarily quote unquote heavy barrel uh, but it does not thin out underneath the hand guard so it may just be that these uh barrels are stiffer and may not be affected as much by the pulling of the shoulder strap but i'm going to let the rifle cool off now and then we will try the 62 grain silver bear ammunition i've given time for the rifle to cool off i pulled off my other target and now we're going to shoot the uh, silver bear 62 grain i'm going to do the same thing shoot the first five rounds just uh, normally shouldering the rifle and then the second five rounds by pulling the strap to the right with as much force as I can. Yeesh, this ammo does not seem to group well out of this rifle. Okay, now let me put tension on the strap. Pulling it as hard as I can while still being able to aim. Okay, that's five rounds with the tension. Let me go grab my target. And here we are with our targets. So they both did about the same. I went ahead and I measured them and they're both uh, the spread on each of these at 80 yards is about uh, two and three quarters inches. Not great ammunition, but that's to be expected. These are somewhat budget ammunitions. And there may be some of you saying, well, you know, if you really wanted to see difference between uh, a, a standard handguard and a free float handguard or a standard handguard shooting it with no pressure or shooting it while tugging really hard on the strap, you need some higher quality ammunition. Well, that may be the case, but if that is the case, that is sort of a result as is to know that if you're shooting, you know, just kind of standard quality or lower quality ammunition through your AR-15, that a free float versus a standard handguard isn't going to make any difference. Or if you have the standard handguard, if you're pulling on your strap, isn't going to make any difference. Well, that's that's a result and that's something I'd like to know as well. So uh, I'll have the float, free float handguard placed on this rifle, hopefully within the next month or so. Once I do that, I'll come back out here. We'll try this exact same test at 80 yards, shooting these same ammunitions and see if we get any tighter groups once we have a free float on that rifle. So I'm not gonna make this a two-parter. So just hold on a minute. We'll jump into the future and start up the second part of this test. And here we are back. It's been a month, month and a half. I'm not sure how long since I took the first part of this video, but here we are back on the property and I have changed the hand guards on the Rock River Arms to a free float. It's not a very expensive one. It wasn't a cheap, cheap one, but not one of the super pricier ones. So changed it to a free float handguard. I put a low profile gas block 
and a new gas tube. And when I say I, I mean a gunsmith. I didn't do it myself. I'm comfortable doing some light gunsmithing, but when it comes to stuff that is slightly outside of my wheelhouse, mainly due to the fact that I'm limited on workspace and tools, I'd rather have a professional gunsmith do it. So I had it switched out and now we're back here, same location. Everything else has remained the same. I did have to side it back in, uh, but it's the same scope in the same position, same everything. Uh, I actually plan to do some other upgrades to this rifle, but for the purposes of this test, the only thing that needed to change was the handguard to see if the free float tightens up our groups at all. We've got the same ammunition we were using last time, the 55 grain PMC bronze and the 62 grain uh, silver bear. And just quickly for the video, I did take a look at the targets videos uh, from that first shoot. And it does look that like when I was putting the pressure on the shoulder strap, that it was changing the point of impact. It was shifting them either a little bit to the right or a little bit, uh, a little bit low as well. But that's something obviously you've been able to see yourself at this point. But I have no shoulder strap on this. I, don't, I haven't put any attachment here to put a shoulder strap. So I'm just going to shoot the 10 rounds as is since I can't put pressure on it anyway. And honestly, we know it wouldn't matter because it's free flow and it's not touching the barrel so any pressure I put on it shouldn't have any effect on the point of impact so let me go ahead get uh, 10 rounds loaded I guess we'll start with the uh, PMC bronze like I said we're gonna start with the PMC bronze we're at the same distance we were before I set my table down exactly where we were let me go ahead and put my ears on let's get the first 10 rounds down range Really trying to adjust this so I can shoot these shots as steady as I possibly can. Okay, and that is 10. Let me go ahead and uh, load the uh, silver bear, give the rifle a chance to cool off, and we'll try the other 10 rounds. Okay, now we've given the rifle a chance to cool off. We're gonna try the uh, silver bear. Got 10 rounds in the magazine. Oosh, that's not grouping very well. I'm doing a little better now. Okay, that's done. Let's go get our targets and compare our results between the uh, free float 
and the standard handguard. And ladies and gentlemen, here we are at our targets and it's sort of interesting results. And, and first of all, like I said earlier, this is only 80 yards. I'm not necessarily using the best ammunition uh, and I'm not the best shooter either. So <laughs> there's a lot of factors involved here in this exact test. But I wanted to see if, you know, just changing it out to a free float would have any effect. And it did seem to have an effect, but in a strange sort of way. As far as the actual spread, that's, and, and I'll get closer to the targets right now. Uh, you know, it seems, let's see, I guess these two would be the furthest here. Let me check them. See, that's about two, two and a half, two and a half inches there. Is that the furthest spread? Yeah, I think that would be the two that are furthest apart. Here would be these two here. That's about two, yeah. It's about the same. It's about two and three quarters as far as the the largest spread on both of these. I mean, there's a little bit of a difference, but not much. And this is the Silver Bear. On the PMC, about the same. This is at about two and a half. And let's see, this is probably the longest here, and that's about two and three quarters. Yeah, so definitely a tighter group with the PMC by about a quarter inch. So did the addition of a free floating handguard make a difference? Ah, you know, it's hard to tell. I think it did, and let me show you why. Let me show you these targets, and I think that'll explain a little bit more. So the top targets are the old targets with the uh, standard handguards, and the bottom targets are the new targets. Even though the actual spread, see here's regular handguard, free floating handguard. Regular handguard, free floating handguard. And although, like I said, the extreme spread isn't terribly different, which would be these two here and these two here, a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. What you can see is look how these spread out. Look how tight these are. Same over here. These are a little more spread out. I mean, you had three touching here, everything else is spread out. Look over here, look how much tighter this group is. So even though on the extreme, there's one or two that uh, flew off a little further, in the end, the free float handguard seems to have created tighter grouping, even though the uh, largest spread didn't change by much, maybe a quarter inch. I expect with very good ammunition, and uh, a better shooter <laughs> and maybe an upgraded trigger uh, you would see even more of a difference but this this shows a difference i mean I'm, I'm, I'm sort of shocked i thought i wouldn't really see much considering the ammo and the distance but it does seem that adding that free float handguard did make a difference between that and the standard handguard so eh, you know something interesting i was going to put a free float handguard on this rifle anyway so i thought hey what a little test i can do and just you know i've got my cameras i've got my gear so let's let's videotape it and see if we see any difference and lo and behold we do see somewhat of a difference in how the barrels group depending on whether it has a standard handguard or a free float handguard so anyway like i said not a terribly scientific test but just a fun one and it does give me some affirmation that putting a free float handguard on this uh, Rock River Arms was probably the right thing to do. Because I'm going to do a few different things. I'm going to upgrade the trigger. I'm probably going to put uh, a LaRue MBT in there. I am going to switch the scope out. It's not a bad scope. I just want to put a different one on there. And uh, the buttstock. I'm going to change this to one that's a little more comfortable uh, for rifle shooting. I mean, this one's fine. It's just kind of your, your standard uh, handguard. But I'm sorry, have I been saying handguard? I mean buttstock. So <laughs> this is sort of the standard buttstock uh not not a lot of frills it's kind of the old-fashioned uh style that i i want to trade it out for one that's a little bit thicker a little bit wider i think it's going to help me take some some more steady shots with this uh rifle so anyway as always it was uh it was a fun shoot for me hopefully it was fun for you to watch hopefully we all learned a little bit something about uh, the difference between regular handguards and free float handguards and i hope you all are going out having some fun at the shooting range staying safe and I will see you in the next video.